Hi, how you doing? This video is both a follow-on from one I made recently, and also a response to several other YouTubers who've made videos on this subject. So here's the thing. I think HEMA is broken, and in fairness, I don't think I'm alone. But I think that uh, HEMA is unnecessary and stupid. Why is MMA a worldwide multi-billion dollar phenomenon while HEMA is largely practiced by white guys with questionable facial hair? The issue with Icy Mike and Jake from Armchair Violence is that while they're both great martial artists, they aren't now and never really have been involved in the HEMA world. So we can certainly take their opinion seriously when they say it looks crap, but we shouldn't give their opinions on how to fix it quite as much credit. And the people who actually are from HEMA, apart from yours truly, tend to only address the issue to respond by saying that HEMA's just fine, thanks very much. But I genuinely don't think it is. I think there's a serious issue with a martial art being essentially created and a syllabus for teaching it developed by people who have no significant martial experience or ability. I think that the idea that a person only needs modern HEMA sparring in order to become a skilled swordsman in a historical system is palpably false. And I don't think I'm alone in that viewpoint. And I'm watching the HEMA guys like constantly debate over like whether it was too hard or this, and then watching a group of them go over a German manuscript on stand-up grappling and watching them and just going like, you guys suck. You have no idea what you're doing. But there's an obvious flaw in the idea that a person with an academic bent who spends vast amounts of time researching and studying historical documents is the right person to teach you to fight, in the same way that a strong, fast, skilled fighter probably isn't the first person you'd go to for advice on transcribing handwritten documents from hundreds of years ago. Robert Childs recently put forward the fairly logical idea that two people, an academic and a fighter, could work together to do exactly the thing that neither one can do alone. If both of those individuals are in HEMA, well, then the martial artist has that scholar from which to be able to learn these things, and the scholar has that martial artist to be able to learn the things that can't really be transmitted down through in the written word. And it's an idea that does have some merit. It is, in fact, what we were doing some 25 to 30 years ago. But the fact is that that combination, while clearly well-meaning, has brought us to exactly the same situation we're in right now where we have a global community practicing a system that many of us consider to be broken. So if I see Mike from Hard to Hurt is wrong when he says to pack HEMA schools with MMA fighters, and Jake from Armchair Violence is wrong when he says to abandon HEMA and just do Battle of the Nations, what is the actual solution? Well, it turns out that HEMA kinda had the answer all along. I'll explain. You see, we have these wonderful manuscripts these absolute treasures of source material, treatises from people who were there using this stuff for real, who went to the trouble of writing it down for future generations to study. Only when we, the HEMA world, found them, we looked at the pretty pictures and decided to copy the fancy tricks they showed us. What we didn't do was to look at what the writers were telling us about how we should be learning this stuff. At least, not in any more than a horribly cursory fashion. There's a theme that runs through work after work after work that, in the main, we simply ignore. And that's that the art of swordplay is supposed to play second fiddle to wrestling. We're supposed to learn to wrestle, to grapple with each other first. And not just in a, here are a couple of cool wrestling tricks kind of way, in a proper, detailed, physically arduous way. Look. Instead of me just ranting, I'll give you some of the advice from the people whose work we're supposedly attempting to recreate. In the Getty version of Fiori Delivery's treatise, he says, In summary, these masters of battle and their students, identified by their various devices, although first presented as governing principles of my art of grappling, are actually the foundation of my entire art of armed fighting, whether on foot or on horseback, or whether in or out of armour. He goes on to say, and my purpose in structuring my art in this way is to make my system easier to learn by using the same principles of the guards, the master, the remedy and the counter throughout it, just as you see first in the section on grappling. He chooses to teach a series of wrestling fundamentals and then allows that they form the basis of all of the rest of the combat skills he's going to teach. Yet we copy the sword stuff because it's cool and we get to pretend that we have a sword so we don't have to learn to grapple. But it's not just Fiori. Silver, 
while wailing about the terrible state of swordplay in England and how no one understands basic principles of fighting anymore, says, Besides, there are now in these days no grips, closers, wrestlings, striking with the hilts, daggers or bucklers used in fencing schools. Why would this matter? Well, because grips, closers and wrestlings are where we learn the basic principles of the art, just like Fury said. And then there's Monte. In his Collectionaire, he says, In discussing physical exercises, I put wrestling before the rest. For even if it offered no other advantage than strengthening our body and instilling in it the temperance in every action that is needed for physical abilities, I decided to discuss wrestling first so that we can preserve that art as the mistress. No other skill, neither throwing nor acrobatics, nor play of arms, nor equitation, teaches us to temper and control our bodies like wrestling, and always to know how to respond where necessity arises. Which seems pretty clear to me. He says similar in De Dignascendis Hominibus, where he says, whenever I want to pursue anything related to the body or spirit, I turn to wrestling as the best guide. For the same reason, I reduce every other physical activity to this one, which is founded entirely on temper, a concept I have defined elsewhere. Temper keeps those who observe it balanced and controlled and prevents us from working impetuously. It makes us step with true measure. It shows us how to strike long or short as needed. It teaches us how to anticipate the opponent's attacks and to avert them by countermeasures. It reveals where the opponent is vulnerable so that we can more easily attack. It also teaches our body to know its own vulnerabilities, allowing it to forestall danger when it arises. So why is it that wrestling is considered to be so important? What is it that we get from wrestling that we can't also get from just turning up to a sports centre with our fencing gear and having a laugh with our mates? Well, lots of things. Wrestling's hard work. Not just in a, well, that was a hard session kind of way, but in a, I genuinely thought I might die for a moment kind of way. It gets you fit like nothing else. Even a mediocre part-time wrestler will blow you out of the water if you don't wrestle. They have the ability to keep fighting long after you have had to stop. But it's not just stamina, it's mental toughness as well. There's no one to help you, no fancy trick to catch your opponent out. It's simply you and your body, and you win or you lose. Sometimes you can push yourself as hard as you think you possibly can, only to find that you lost anyway. It's really hard to put this into words if you don't already understand it, but wrestling breaks you down to your very core and then allows you to build yourself back up better and stronger, both physically and mentally. And then there's all the stuff Monte talks about. The understanding of measure, the internalisation of how the slightest difference in pressure affects what you can and have to do to counter it. It teaches you to act the second the opportunity's there and teaches you the folly of acting when it's not. Wrestling teaches you the fundamentals of combat, when those fundamentals are all you have. There's absolutely nowhere to hide. And when you've learned them, that's when you can start to learn how to add in weapons. But don't take my word for it. Take the word of Don Duarte, King of Portugal, who considered wrestling so important to any physical skill that he included a section on wrestling in his 15th century work on horsemanship and jousting. He advised everybody to whom this might be of interest to work hard to learn well this art of wrestling and to enjoy its advantages. So while this is an interesting academic exercise, how can you actually do this? Well, I can confidently say that taking the wrestling sections of the manuals you look at and treating them exactly the same way you do the sword work is not going to work. Let go of that arrogant view that you must only use historical techniques to help you learn. And find a wrestling coach. If you can't find a wrestler, find a judo club or a Brazilian jiu-jitsu club and go along. It's all wrestling of one kind or another after all. But don't just go once. Stick with it. Get past that initial period where all you ever experience is losing. Don't let your ego stop you from learning what Fiore, Silva, Monte, Dom Duarte and so many others said was so vital. And then, after a year or two, come back and tell me how much better a sword fighter you are. So now, I want to pass this over to you. Do you agree with me? With Silva, with Fiore, with Monte and all the others? Or is it just ridiculous? A sword's all the equaliser you need. Stick something in the comments and let me know. The response, though, isn't going to be, well, okay, I guess we better figure out a new, a new way of doing this and a new way of even approaching these manuscripts. 
No, it's going to be like, well, you're a jerk. That, you know, fighting isn't everything. Yeah, maybe subscribe. That'd be lovely. And to those of you still here at the very end of the video, Fight Team.